know that works. Oh, okay. Character sheet works and everything. The other thing that, that doesn't work, that's the thing that doesn't work. Oh, got it. That thing. Yeah. It's that thing that normally does the really catastrophic wounds. Um, welcome, one and all. We are live. I'm not going to ask John because enough time has passed and I've not gotten an error. So here we are on Myth Brigade for the 12th episode of the Tides of Nurgle campaign. It's fantastic. We've been doing this for quite a long time now. It's pretty exciting. Um, I had a handful of announcements, but first I want to make my rounds and say hello to our players. So James Payne, also known as Grimwald Brom, how are you, man? Doing great. How are you? Pretty good. Your lighting game is still strong. Good to see it. <laughs> should uh quit your career in software and move into film uh you could help me because i don't just get these fucking terrible leds i like the steady income <laughs> <laughs> fair enough eric uh and uh corbin Mossbrewer, how are you man i'm doing great now that everybody is not sick and and stuff did you move your shelves behind you did you move <clears throat> some shit i did yes they are no longer behind me my ocd they're is. over there <laughs> Could you move them back? No? Okay. I could, but not right the second. That would be too much effort. All right. John, welcome, man. How are you doing? Good. Uh, busy at work, but had a huge successful week. So shout out to maybe some of the people watching um, for the support throughout the week. So yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Awesome. How about that wall? Where the green? Did anybody notice the green's gone? Uh, I was going to say yes. the green screen's gone. Yeah, the green's gone. The Star Wars uh, glory. I'm, I'm trying to adult up a little bit by hanging um, all my Star Wars posters and then my Lego toys. Um, but don't worry, I have a new fancy retractable green screen for all my streaming <laughs> needs. That's so awesome. For a moment, I was wondering if you were fucking with us and the green screen was still there, but <laughs> your, the background was actually a black wall. <laughs> Damn, that was a better opportunity. Rivers, how are you doing, man? Welcome. Uh, to say it to you, it's a, uh, it's going. <laughs> That's the only way I can say it. It's been a, this has been cold here, and I absolutely detest the cold. Go figure. I moved to the Pacific Northwest. I was but, gonna say you uh, moved to the wrong state if you're trying to stay away from the cold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy also who, like, when he got out of the military, was like, "I'll try moving to Alaska," and then that didn't work out. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, because it's cold uh, there too. Like, nope. No. <laughs> well, I'm glad you beat the traffic to join us. So that's awesome. Last but not least, Jim Powers, uh, please tell us your story about the crazy fire. Um, obviously, we're not going to post pictures of said crazy fire, but what what in the fuck happened, man? We don't know. It was um, a fire broke out in the uh, the main tower of the apartment complex that I live in. Um, about 16 units were destroyed. Uh, one person unfortunately Whoa. was killed. Um, this is about two and a half, three weeks ago, and the building is still just gutted. Um, the nobody's moved in from the ninth floor down to the first. Uh, so there's, you know, there's like I think there's 20 units per floor in that building. So that's, you know, a significant number of people are displaced right now. Um, in the meantime, they're going out and painting the outside of the building to get rid of the smoke damage. Oh, nice. So, so nothing to see here. They're just painting. Yeah, away. exactly. Um, yeah. This is actually the second fire in the complex in seven years. So there's, um, it, there's probably going to be a fairly large lawsuit if i had to guess but well, we are glad that you were not directly affected by yes that. me too happy to have you here cool so i have a couple announcements so our t-shirts arrive on wednesday i went and saw um there was some Yay. doubt yeah there was some doubt as to whether or not they um were gonna look like shit and so i asked to go see them i got to see it and it looks fantastic so they'll be here wednesday we've got a couple that are already promised out so that's awesome we also have stickers, as John is showing you. Uh, so we've got some white background ones. We have some clear ones, and uh, we're going to find some cool way to uh, to distribute those, probably by drone. Um, also, the uh, the rule that we established last week, and I can't remember if it was on stream, so I'll, I'll share it here. We are going to choose one player who has the quote of the night, uh, the quote of the stream, and give that player a free uh, reversal. Now, last week I said that was going to be a free critical success. I then realized how drunk I was to just allow that, so we're going to call it a reversal instead. That means basically that if you roll, you can use your free reversal to flip those dice. So a 92 becomes a 29 and so on. So that's that. And also... If you roll a 
99. Then you're just fucked. Thanks for asking. That's the other thing is that a free critical <laughs> success would allow you to just bypass the critical failure. So I think that's uh, too heavy handed. Um, but if you get a Myth Brigade logo tattooed on your face, then you can have a free critical success. Um, that's fine. No takers? Okay. Fine. Will a temporary one work? No. Yeah, it's, it's, how no. can I get around this? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Uh, and lastly, in this administrata bit, um, was a comment from one of our YouTube followers, um, Jeremy Barbic. So we just did a, a Rules Bites episode about endeavors, which is the stuff that the rules provide for you to do between adventures. So one somewhere between one and three, depending on how long your break is. Anyway, so he, he asks, what endeavors do uh, Myth Brigade's players do between adventures? Laundry to wash out all the blood, pus, grime, and other detritus from their clothes? Fighting Papa Nurgle's finest is not the time to wear your Sunday's finest. Um, so I did want to go around the horn and ask, actually, what, what kinds of endeavors uh, does Grimwald wish that he could get himself up to right now? What would he rather um, be doing? Well, my priority right now is getting them to learn to read. <laughs> Being illiterate is kind of grating on me. So, so you're telling me that if he were not in the midst of this, that he would be, say, already in uh, um, in Uber's Reich, just kicked back with a book, or would he be carousing with the ladies? Uh, this time for both. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Fair enough. Corbin, uh, same question. What what would you be doing if you weren't uh, relegated to washing pus out of your uh, your bloodied clothes? Uh, probably be uh, cooking and, and carousing and dabbling in a, in a little experimentation with my painting because mm. I'm getting really tired of painting the same fat man over and over again. Say that better. Uh, you're not painting the fat man. You're, you're painting a portrait of the fat man. That's... Well, this is, yes, this is an all age. This is an all age stream. Uh, but it's it's not even a portrait of the fat man because it's it's a portrait of the fat man as he would wish to be. This is this is so true. <laughs> and, uh, you know what though? I am glad that that he came up. Only the second question in Geshwind, What would you be doing uh, with your time if you had some downtime? You weren't under a dome. Uh, I would definitely be trying to find more business and trying to make connections throughout the towns. Um, because if you're not moving, you're standing still. That's the motto. Nice. <laughs> you should have that painted on the side of a wagon. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oswald, what about you, man? If you were not stuck here, I know you would be fixing doors all over the Reichland, but uh, what else would you be doing? Would it be too curt to say anything but? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, no, I think Oswald, <clears throat> he would prefer much to be if it, if it was expressed to be teaching someone because that's eventually what he wants to do is he wants to help other people develop the skills like because he wants to be a teacher one day he wants but he doesn't want to mm. go about it in the normal way that's like his end goal um so i think starting on that path would be what he would be interested in yeah so you'd, you'd want to be at uh, altdorf university or something teaching the engineering students how to make fantastic war machines or Something like that. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Bartleby, Jim, what in the world would Bartleby rather be doing? What would he do if he had a little bit of downtime outside of the rules of endeavors, right? But what uh, what would he be working on? You're on mute. He would be working on unmuting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, he definitely uh, he definitely picked the wrong week to quit drinking, right? <laughs> um, that's probably what he would be up to, working his dead-end job, picking things up and putting them down, and uh, drinking himself to death slowly. Nice. So he would actually be undertaking an income endeavor, which is basically where you do your job and you get paid for it. And uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I think probably we can – I'm going to find some music here. Shit, I don't know what I did with my music browser. I have like 27 browser windows open. Music. Hello. That's regrettable. Who did something remarkable with their um, improvements? Anybody do anything cool with their experience points? 
Did anybody do anything with their experience points? Got a little bit faster, got a little bit better at patching myself up after getting injured. I actually haven't spent, I do believe, this last bit of stuff only because I needed to save up to buy something else. So mm. nice. All right. Well, there's some music. You guys hear that? Uh, okay. I will say, though, that if Oswald ever gets his hand on a rifle or any type of black powder weapon, I, he, he, I will be rolling 50s or below. 51 and below, actually. But mm. got to get my hand on black powder. So, got to find some niter in the woods. That's just what, that's just what you need is uh, some, some fucking armaments. All right. Oh God, the volume slider is so pitiful. Sorry about that, guys. I heard it briefly. Right. Yeah, I heard it briefly. The, the catch is, if you can hear it, it's too loud for the recording. Yeah. So then I get people upset with me because it's distracting from the action. So anyway, why don't we? Why don't we go into the Reichland? Why don't we get back to it? So, the acrid stench of the burning farm still clings in your noses, in the backs of your throats, even though the property has long fallen out of sight. A black plume rises in the distance behind you, veined with swirls of mustard color, no doubt the putrid flesh of the abominations you set ablaze. High above, the dome blocks the smoke's path, causing it to curl inward, writhing like maggots in rotten meat. Despite the passing of but a few days, you're weary, consumed with an oppressive sense of dread, overwhelming thirst and hunger. You now follow a leaf-strewn pair of wagon ruts, not unlike the ones you followed into Feldweg only days ago. They lead steadily to the north, though to what end you cannot know the reichwald forest around you seems to shudder with your passing it's dark here despite the midday hour the bark of the ancient trees is dark with a thin layer of slick mucus the ground in substantial part is covered by strange fungi much like those you've seen elsewhere but larger more numerous and thriving a stillness like no other pervades. No animals, no wind, no running water. Just stillness. A sweet mix of decay and infection taints the air you breathe. The camera pans across the scene and finds you there on the trail of decay. Your feet squishing in the muddy ruts. Muddy not from rain, but from a moisture that seems to be creeping into the dirt from below. Hi everyone. How do you feel about that? What do you what do you do? Who would I see at the front of the line? No volunteers. I'll go to the front of the line. <laughs> so Geshwind, you're you're moving to the front and watching. I'm best your in the middle. Hiding in between your, your taller folks. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Uh, from what I recall, Oswald's still licking his wounds from uh, being crabbed, as I like to call it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he's probably, like, not feeling too hot, especially because, you know, my veins are starting to glow black or something. Mm. So speaking of your veins, so you'll recall last time Geshwin's dream of... Uh, Oswald, um, you recall that, don't you, Cashwind? Oh yes. I don't <laughs> think anybody else believed me what happened, but I remember it vividly. So you you also are nursing a wound there on your head from where you smashed into the uh, the mirror. But Oswald, your uh, your veins have the the black sort of tendrils beneath the skin have not yet returned. Although you've also not had an opportunity to bathe and check yourself out closely, so. It's entirely possible that they're still there. 
You make your way toward the north. So the ground, you notice, um, again, is covered with this fungus. And it's much, much more um, of a blanket than it once was before. Uh, before, you'll recall, there were very small little mushrooms and things. Now, in between all the trees, the underbrush is almost choking from all the fungus. You guys... What are you guys kind of doing? Are you just marching along, just kind of trump, trump, trump? Like, what? What's your, uh, what's the situation? Um, just to confirm, it is thicker, kind of the closer we're getting towards the catacombs, rather than it's like just sprouting out at, because time has passed. Uh, maybe. Yeah, you okay. you would say probably so. You you've noticed okay. in the last um, say thirty to forty five minutes a definite um, sort of thickening of the the concentration. Gotcha. Probably not realizing it at first because it came on gradual. I kind of, once that kind of dawns on me, I am definitely going to kind of change my pace and my gait and become a lot more cautious. Um, I make some kind of snide remarks about if we see anybody, you know, lumbering through the forest, let's not call out to them this time, if you don't mind. Reflecting on the uh, <laughs> the farmers that you encountered at the end of last adventure, who were in fact lumbering through the forest, <laughs> who did in fact get called out to Bartleby. What about you? You're uh, you're seeing all this. There's a bit of a dread there, no doubt. You're on mute. Still, you're on mute. Damn, my microphone's flipped up. Sorry about that. Uh, Bartleby is kind of just um, trying to get through it. You know, he's just got his teeth grit, and he's just kind of trudging on, trying not to think about what they're going into. So, Corbin, I'm going to ask you to um, give me a cooking roll. <laughs> and and I, I saw everybody grimace, not for the reasons you're thinking. <laughs> if I recall, we had that potato or whatever. Mmm, delicious potatoes. Don't have potatoes. Good survival potatoes. food 101. Um, oh, yes. Any modifier? Uh, it's going to be, uh, let's say, average. So that gives you a plus 20. Wow. Nice. nice. So the thing that troubles you, um, mushrooms are among your favorite ingredients. And you've, geeky as it sounds, even for a cook, you've studied these fungi this is like nothing you've seen before looking closely at them they seem to move and they almost react as you kind of reach toward them if you, as if you were going to pick or poke at one they sort of shrink back a wee bit react to your, the approach of your finger not sudden like but just very <laughs> slight yeah but still that's not behavior you normally see in a mushroom you guys uh, I kind of wave at my companions. Am I imagining this, or are these things moving? What do you guys do? Take a look, see what uh, he's referring to. Do you, you approach. I, what do the like, rest of you guys do? I think while that's going on, as like Oswald maybe hears this, he doesn't like look at it, but like <clears throat> he's got that book. If you recall, the one that's all covered in the runes, and uh, it's the farmer's little girl's journal or something like that. Yep. It was underneath the stairs. And it's like, it's on his side, like in a satchel sort of like thing, in his little like toga that he has now, because he doesn't have proper clothes anymore. Um, but uh, it kind of feels even more heavy to him as like he stops and everybody stops to observe this fun guy. Like the weight just increases because he's like, this has to do something with it. Like this has to be a part of it. Mm. You, you put your hand down there and just kind of wishing that you could make that connection. Maybe that would make things simpler. Grimwald and Geshwin, you approach Bartleby. What do you do? Do you, you approach the little halfling kind of leaning over there, looking at this, uh, this particular large mushroom? Uh, Bartleby's going to look on from afar and as the, you know, as, um, the mushroom moves. He's just gonna reach out, pull out his little flask, take a swig. <clears throat> That's not good. Put it away. 
Nice. Can't be right. Let's have that uh, consume alcohol roll. Why don't you? This will be easy oh, sure. for you. Yeah, this will be easy for you. So plus forty. Um, you start to imbibe more, and then your your uh, bonus will go down. Yeah, I'm I'm rather envious of Bartleby's flask now. <laughs> you don't see it, remember, because you're staring at the mushrooms. I said I'm. Nice. <clears throat> So Bartleby, you take a, a swig and kind of bite back the sting, thinking what what you know, what could it be? Um, the other two of you approach the halfling, and he's kind of leaning over this sort of large, putrid color, sort of almost like this sickly yellow colored mushroom. Um, it's about this big, in, in total, and it's got sort of a steep uh, crown on it. So you. Uh, Lean down, and, and what do you do to demonstrate uh, your point there, Corbin? I just kind of reach for it like I did before. I don't want to touch it, um, but just see if I can get a little bit of a reaction from it. Yeah. I am going to say, remind me how Sixth Sense works, please, Geshwind, because I'm tired. <laughs> and you should know because your character has it. Plus, the stream needs to know how six cents work. You roll intuition on his behalf, I think. And... All right, fine. And I spoil the surprise. Oh, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh, thanks. There we go. All right. That's handy. Yeah, it is. It's very cool. Is that the skull bun or the what? eye bun to do that? The eye, I think. So Geshwind, as he reaches down, so, you know, Grimwald is just amazed because, yeah, this thing does shrink back. As you push forward with your finger, it literally leans back and you can even see the ground kind of giving way where it seems like it's pushing back with its roots. Um, of course, not to an extreme angle because it can't physics and whatnot. Geshwin, you feel really bad about something because at the base of this mushroom, just as it's pushing backward, you see these sort of vein-like uh, structures that start to kind of swell. And the base of the mushroom, though they don't seem to notice it, starts to get bigger, like baseball size bigger. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to quickly kind of put my arm, not for his hand, but just his whole body and like push everybody back. Just be like, give me a doesn't look good. Give me a brawling check. And I'm going to say this is unopposed. So you're going to try to, to, to basically fling the two of them at the same time. Okay. If, if the mushroom has already moved, I've made my point, and I'm not going to resist being pushed away from it. So, sadly, your failure is not certain, certainly not your inability to move the halfling, but it's your inability to act quickly enough. So you reach out and put your hands on his shoulders just as this thing spits a spray of pus and some sort of strange <laughs> thick look on John's face, strange particulate matter in the air. Um, this is going to potentially cause you a bit of an infection, which is a shame. So uh, you're going to go ahead and make a an easy toughness check as you breathe in this ichor and you have it splattered all over your mouths and your noses. Easy is three, plus, plus 40. Yes, the three of you. Ooh. Oh, that sucks. That does suck. That super sucks. Okay. Thanks. So Corbin, as you, you're pointing to this, you kind of look over your shoulder and you're explaining to them, look, it moves. And you look back just as this thing just erupts and your mouth is still open. And literally about a good tablespoon full of this pus-like liquid just flies into your mouth and your eyes are burning from probably the same thing. Um, we will talk offline about what actually happens to you beyond that. Uh, but you are actually going to take two wounds from that. Um, ignoring armor, but your toughness should probably soak most of that, I would think. How does that work? So your toughness bonus removes wounds. Equivalent to, it's a, the tens digit of your toughness, right? So if you got a toughness of ah, 20, it would be two. Three. 
Okay, got it. So you, um, you're you spitting and sputtering and begin to vomit. Um, what do you do in the meanwhile? You obviously see this happen. It's just... Psh! Yeah, I'm going to grab like a cloth or whatever I can to kind of like... Tr- knowing that I don't like these mushrooms at all anyways, try to like wipe it off his face and um, ask Bartleby for the alcohol so he can like rinse his mouth out at least. Bartleby... <laughs> More I, I, love that, I love that nod i love that just like yeah, yeah. He, he turns and, and as he moves out of the way you see the halfling's face and you see the spray uh from over their shoulders right their yep. bodies obscuring what it's coming from what do you uh what do you do do you give up your goods yeah Absolutely. Does, it, does it hurt do you uh a little bit you produce the <laughs> sure. flask Try to uh, try to clean up his face. I'm presuming you drag him away from the mushrooms, right? Yeah, we get. I'm well going to scramble that. away from the mushrooms if nobody's dragging me. Yes, I could just. Of course, I can't see where I'm going, so <laughs> that makes it difficult. So within seconds of you sort of staggering backward, your friends grabbing you by the shoulders and the arms, kind of pulling you back to the center of these narrow wagon ruts. Mind you, it's not a big road here. Three or maybe four other smaller mushrooms also erupt, almost responding to the first one, spraying pus everywhere and these little dust-like particles into the air, which you see slowly start to kind of rain down. There's not enough wind to push them. So they... Very dangerous place you find yourselves in. You clean up the halfling's face. Oswald, what do you do? I think Oswald, um, after having everybody, you know, kind of pulling him back and stuff like that, I think he's going to ask for the alcohol, what a little bit we might have left, um, and just kind of like take little bits of his toga and rip it, stuff that hasn't been like dirtied, and like this previous bed sheet, and just kind of like make little, like wet it just enough and double layer it to like wrap around our faces as a sort of like, maybe he figured out how to do that when he was on a fire brigade when he was younger in Uber's Reich. Mm. Um, um, and uh, just, to, just to create some sort of barrier, um, some sort of uh, protectant, at, at least from the smoke. Cause I mean, it is, it is getting to the point where it's super smoky and cloudy and dusty and all that stuff. Cause of the stagnation in the air. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm going to spend some time doing that after that happens. If I'm allowed the alcohol. So we do have. Yeah. So you, you, as you're kind of forming this thought, right? Bartleby passes off the flask to uh, Geshwin, who is beginning to sort of help clean off face. I'm going to allow Grimwald. You can make an assisted first aid check if you'd like to try to clean this up. Because uh, I do believe that's a recent obsession of yours. Uh, Difficulty? Uh, Yeah, for this is actually going to be easy. It's not too bad. You you got to be careful around his eyes. Nice. Only barely nice, but nice. You uh, <laughs> you hold basically have to hold the halfling down. Is between Geshwin and Grimwald. You're kind of wiping this stuff out of his eyes, and it's literally like these little granules. When they hit the skin, it seems like they themselves turn to this this icor. So you're wiping, and it's stringy and nasty. Uh, but you do get it cleaned up using. Almost half of the uh, treasured Bartleby liquor. At which point, of course, Oswald reaches in. Do you give up the liquor? Do you, keep... you hand it back to him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you go then and proceed to make yourself... You, do you make uh, strips for your from your toga? Give me a... I don't even want to roll because you might do something bad and those will fall off. So you, uh, <laughs> you make uh, alcoholic masks. Uh, uh, so, so. I think if there's not enough alcohol to make, I think Oswald will make enough for everyone but himself. Like he'll make one for himself last if there's not enough. So I will let you choose. So if you want to, there, if you want to do that, I will give you 25 extra experience points just for being a badass. Well, I think I don't even think I want the experience. I think it's more of like how Oswald's been up until this point because he's always been about 
like just being helpful to his friends, especially those who have stuck by him, because like who else mm-hmm. is going to do it? But you know, in his mind, him. Like it's not a bad thing for everybody else to not be able to do it, but he's the one who's educated. He's the one responsible. You know, so like. So you you make I, these masks. You you make them one one for each of your companions, and the last couple of drops as you're putting them in yours. Uh, the flask is empty, just a couple of drops, and you have that thought. Bartleby, you see your flask turned upside down, and bloop, drip, drip, standing there. What's your reaction? Uh, Bartleby is disappointed, but he's not heartbroken about it. You know, this is like, that's his, that's pretty much his, um, his everything's gonna be okay juice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all gone now. Nice. Also, I would like to point out Oswald's toga has shrunken now some. Not a lot, <laughs> yeah. but some. Uh, it's We're going to get back to the bare bones here in a minute, boys. <laughs> it's going to be like a micro mini toga very soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a mini skirt by the end of the day. So, uh. you, uh, yeah, you, wear, you wear your masks looking like bandits now. That, that's not lost on you, of course, as you look at each other, a little halfling with his uh, his eyes are blood red. Reaction probably to the irritant. Um, Grimwald, you're concerned, along with your success, is the perception that he might be in trouble based on the level of inflammation and stuff. And the sooner we get back to, to get, get this over with and get back to town, the better. Yes. So you head northward, I presume, or do you stay there and poke at more... Uh, I think we our lesson. Nobody touch the mushrooms. <laughs> We're leaving. You're especially thirsty, Corbin. Um, you've only got a tiny bit of water. You were able to boil some water after your previous encounter, so you do have a flask of water apiece, but that's not going to last you very long. So you move to the north. Um, about another 45 minutes of trudging along this track, making decent, uh, uh, keeping a decent pace, hoping to put that behind you you see ahead of you on the road a wagon it's very clear that it's a wagon this is, or it's some other rectangular thing with wheels whatever you would call that it's at a distance that you can't tell exactly yet if it's moving or not if it's moving it's moving very slow there's something not right about maybe the horses as well as you get closer you see that the horses have actually slumped over they're not moving. They're there, but they're not moving. Are they facing towards us or away from us? Give me a perception roll as you look closer. I can answer that question for you, but there's more to see, being that you're looking. Normal or any modifier? Uh, easy, please. Which is or, uh, I'm sorry, what, a- average, so uh, plus 20. I'm sorry. So as you kind of lean in to sort out which, which end of the horse you're looking at, it's obviously the, the front because you can kind of make out the whole body of the horse. The wagon is not blocking it. Also, you notice that it seems that there's a wagon rider there also. He's slumped over in the seat. You can still see the, the driving whip on the end of its stick just kind of slack there. There's no movement but you do notice a lot of this fungus around that area, just kind of creeping almost toward the scene. You do. Like actively or like it's... No, 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 not moving, but having grown in that direction, yes. Okay. That's a good question. It's like little uh, Nintendo mushrooms cruising in. (laughs) (laughs) I don't trust the mushrooms anymore. You shouldn't, especially not in a bisque. (laughs) <laughs> so you call this out I would assume to the rest of the group what, what does the rest of the group do um, cautiously approach to like 10 yards away from him yeah you all yeah, kind I'm of go to together as little noise as possible give me a stealth roll scan the surroundings and uh, are you, you trying to be uh, c- uh, quiet as well uh, Grimwald yeah Definitely trying to be quiet. Uh, hey guys, fun. we should be stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> you pull out your challenge. 
average. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So at this you... point, Oswald's just like he's yeah. got this axe that he's had, like he just acquired, and he's like just using average. using it as a walking stick, basically. And he doesn't care about stealthing. He's just he's just at this point he was just resigned to it because he's he's hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, so it would be average. The the quiet doesn't help you here. So, yeah, that was a, a pretty horrific failure. Um, Grimwald, what about you? Wow. So 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 you're you're hoping you're moving along quietly and you're certain of your stealth, but Geshwin, for whatever reason, is uh, he steps on a root and kind of slides to the side and grunts to himself, and he's not being very quiet. You don't know if you're you're perceived or not. If there's a bad guy out there nearby, you probably were. If it's distant, likely not. And the smell here, the good news is predators are not going to smell you because the air literally smells like rot. Just that subtle scent of spoiled meat. You get you get the distance that you, you want to get from the wagon. It's there. The wood, you know, kind of, you know, it's sitting kind of cockeyed on the track like it was trying to go around something. The horses are just slumped down, just in a lump. Do they, like, can you tell if they're breathing or not from this distance? Give me a perception check and let me see. It would be, that's going to be a little more challenging. So that's going to be... You said slumped down. They're not standing, right? No, they're not standing. No, no, no. That'll okay. be, so um, they're collapsed. It's yeah. not normal behavior for a horse, really. <laughs> yes, that'll be challenging. So no mods. Right. It, oh, jeez. So interestingly, you were a servant. You spent a lot of time in the stables. And one of the things that you learn working in the stables is how to spot a sick horse. This horse is really fucking sick. <laughs> like, real bad. Uh, probably dead. Yeah, the, I um, just moved Gashwin back with me and it's like, I don't, I don't think there's anything we can do <laughs> if they're even alive. Definitely don't want to mess with them. Should we... I'm going to say this. Check the cart and see if there's anything of use like waters or non-perishables or something. Give it a wide berth around to the back of the cart? Yeah. I'm Can we that. give it a wide berth or is it in our way? That's point. the problem. You, you, Are you, we wading into the fungus? You say that, uh, Corbin, as you kind of, you know, crane your neck and yeah, that's a problem. It occupies the center, and this fungus seems to have grown in toward it. And now that you're closer, you can see that the fungus seems to be growing up and kind of on the edge of the horses as well. If so you to go, avoid the fungus, we got to climb over the horses. That's a fact. And to take a wide berth, you would have to wade through what has become a veritable forest or sea of this fungus. Well, uh, let's see. Is there any like rock on the path? That, like, just I can pick up like a little pebble, even sure. or something. Um, yeah. I'm gonna turn around. Are you guys alright if we just toss this and see if the horses react? Yeah, I'll get so ready. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna from say. a distance. Yes. Yeah. Get a little I further don't. away. Yeah. So back up to like. Trying to think how far I can accurately toss a rock from 15 to 20 feet away and toss it underhand, just like at these two horse bodies, which are pretty big targets, I would imagine. Yeah, they are. And so, you know, throwing into the mass there, you're going to hit one or the other of them, you would think, with an easy or plus 40 uh, thrown weapon roll. Well, ballistic skill. How I can yeah, ballistic skill. Miss this. Yes. Nice. So I love the roll. I love that we have some positive rolls going on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's not lost on me tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to shrink this so we can see just a little bit more of the rolls. Um, so you you underhand sort of softball lob this rock. Right. And it's, it's, you know, it's about that big. Um, and right on target just bonk right off one of the horse's snout it doesn't react at all in fact it's like this dull like thunk and it rolls off to the side
Bartleby well. separately. Give me a uh, <laughs> give me a perception check, please. At uh, challenging, so no mod. Okay. What do you say, Gashwin? Uh, Gashwin. I was gonna say who's first. I'll try and go. Might I suggest like taking a knife and just like plunging it in? You've already read my mind, I see. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Same page. Got it. I see this. You, know, you, you kind of grab him by the arm and turn him around to say that. And he kind of, you, you have a, a brief moment of like kind of good humor. And the camera switches back to Bartleby. Bartleby, ever watchful, ever stoic. You glance back and probably about 15 yards back. You notice there's some spots where the footsteps are particularly deep because remember that the dirt track here is pretty muddy. And in those footprints, much like the tiny ones that you saw growing in the village under the elders' footsteps, are these fucking mushrooms. They're closing in behind you. Uh, uh, fellas, I, I, I don't, I don't think we can tarry here. I think we need to keep moving. Look, and Bartleby will turn around and point them out. Let's go. <laughs> Stab a dead horse. <laughs> I, I love the long pause there. Uh, so good. Um, so Grimwald, you're, you're already a couple steps ahead, kind of looking over your shoulder to see what's going on. Uh, you don't see any enemies. You know, I can't at this distance see what's going on. You you walk up and stab the horse with your with your rapier. Mm -hmm. So the horse is not going to contest your uh, your your attack. <laughs> uh, you walk you walk up. Um, tell me how you just kind of stick it, just psh, or do you slash it? Like how do you how do you like, do it? What like, does that look like? Killed the uh, the bull with a like a deep stab to its chest, which hit something important to the fungus that was taking control of it so pretty much the same thing to the horse like in the chest where the heart would be okay so yeah you can go ahead and give me an attack roll let's see if let's see how good your aim is as you uh you kind of raise up your rapier oswald you see this what are you doing by the way so bartleby's kind of looking over the shoulder geshwin's there corbin kind of right there next to geshwin what are you what are you doing i think oswald's foregoing any want to harm these things and just out of like expediency, I think he's going over whatever is the, the, the driver or whatever's the cargo of this wagon per se. Like yeah. maybe he's even stepped up into the wagon. Something you have you... to go past the horses. <clears throat> yeah. So you, you, you would have to go past the horses for sure to get up in the wagon. You're Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, is it a easy average? Uh, yeah, it's going to be easy cause they're not moving. So you got a fairly nice. Yeah. Okay. So SL2, uh, what the damage on your, uh, that'd be 10 total for that one. So you, you kind of raise up and just slide it in and, um, it doesn't make a, a fleshy stab sound. It makes a hollow filled with something that shouldn't be there sound as you and then out of its ass and its nose and the hole that you just made, this nasty shit just starts to bubble up. And it almost, it's like it was under pressure, like bloated from the inside. The horse still doesn't move. You withdraw your rapier, <laughs> slinging some of this <laughs> snot as you do so. What do you do? Uh, I'll leave the other one and you look over make my way onto one. the wagon. So you, you kind of jump up onto the wagon then? Is that what you're after? And help whoever's next. Okay, so you're going to, you're gonna pretty much jump. So that's gonna be what, athletics or something? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I have the strong legs trait. That's why I was gonna even say I was gonna do it, but to do it is a athletics test. That's it. Right, like you so just actually you know. Test and it's the jump action. Got it, do it. Modifier? Mm. From this distance, I'm going to say it'll be uh, no modifier. So challenging. Please don't critically fail. <laughs> that would suck. Par for the course, though. Yes. Did it work? Uh, nope. I don't have anything. There it is. Damn. Grimwald. 
I think you <laughs> did you hack roll 20 is that what you did <laughs> uh, so you you hurl yourself over the horse onto the wagon the wagon kind of sways slightly and the dead body that's that's hunched over literally just kind of sags and then falls to the ground on the other side of the wagon from you yeah. Yeah, um, I'm just going to boot him off anyway he seems to be you hear this kind of chain clink sound like he might he might be wearing some kind of armor when he hits the ground just a sort of chink sound um and then he falls on the whip and actually snaps the shaft of it you are on the wagon you turn oswald is already there in the midst of jumping give me your roll with your strong legs benefit if you get a critical success i'm going to say you jump over the forest through the dome <laughs> <laughs> and land in actually control. um can i just like get a hand from him instead of jumping. Mm -hmm. Now I've seen him, he's just like pole vaulted up to it. Um, yeah, or actually, yep. can, I, can I go, like, since this guy's falling, can I like move out of the way of him? Because was, that was probably where I was going to be and he just falls down on the ground Yeah, and just like look him over, I guess. I have a stick. I'll poke him with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the corpse falls and hits the ground at an odd angle and the legs being kind of still up in the air sort of fold over causing a snap of a couple of vertebrae as it falls and just kind of crumples he is in fact wearing a chainmail shirt uh, a little bit larger than maybe you a little saggy um he has a, a leather belt with a, a small pouch on it kind of a, a stout leather pouch would that alone would fetch a few pennies uh, seems to have a brass buckle, from what you can tell from his twisted midsection. He has a dagger, and uh, seemingly a short sword, and not a bad one at that. The troubling part is, it seems that his injuries came from inside. As you're looking at his, his mouth and his, his jaws, just literally kind of snapped and, and hanging agape. And there's just all of this horrific matter that seems like it's kind of just blasted out of this this guy's mouth glancing over your shoulder the horses are the same oswald like you know using the butt of his axe to kind of like kick all this stuff away uh he says this would be good to use valuable even and uh he like kicks the coin purse away from him and says that's what Fetch a fair price. I imagine there's something in it as well. We could use this armor, albeit I have quandaries about using a dead man's armor and clothing, but we may not have the choice. Well, given where we are and how we died, I'm not sure there'll be any volunteers to wear that. I'll wear it. <laughs> well then if that's if that's what uh Bartleby says oswald just like he maybe takes like another part of his tunic and like wraps his hands and like just something just so he could like start lifting the shirt off the guy yeah wait is he on the wagon or is he on the ground he's on he's the ground yeah. uh, oswald's yeah. on the ground so he he started yeah. to get on the wagon but noticing uh noticing the the situation he refrained and Got it. Sorry, I was thinking the corpse fell onto the mushrooms on the ground. No, well, it yeah, technically it did. It, but he, yes, it did. It, into the pile of mushrooms that are kind of at the edge of the wagon. So, yes, to move it around, or whatever, <laughs> I guess wind. Uh, you're you're standing back, and actually, you, I'm going to say that you could not make this connection because you're kind of back, like hmm. mushrooms. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Be careful if you're going to do that. <laughs> he says this just as you, as you kick the coin purse. and uh, It's actually attached to his belt, and the top of it kind of flips open, and you actually see some brass pennies kind of roll out. Not many, but a few. He calls out, be careful. And you, you look around, and he is, in fact, laying on some fungi that he has flattened. Maybe that's a blessing. But there are many others that are forming and... Oh, shit. I just spilled wine everywhere. That's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> hey, for you the stream. Want to take a break? No. Yeah, we should take a break. Oh, no, that's, yeah, okay. that's fine. No, well, it wasn't quite should... everywhere, is it? It's just right there. <laughs> it wasn't full. <laughs> that would have been depressing. Yeah. That would be. Anyway, so, yeah, you, you noticed the, um, the situation with the, the fungi. Uh, I think Oswald knowing within himself that he's probably doomed because 
Oswald has experienced some things that the other uh, characters haven't. Uh, and he just doesn't want to tell people that. I don't think he cares at this point. You just like, reach down and... Yeah, I don't think I don't think he pays it any mind. He just reaches down and like yanks this shirt over this guy's head. Yep. And probably will go and, and help strip as well. No, I, like if you approach him, he will put up a hand and say, okay. "Go away!" Like, okay. "Go away." You probably will heed that warning. So, so you're you're doing this, and uh, I'm going to ask you, please, to make yourself. A, I'm going to step <laughs> away because I don't want to get blasted by any more mushroom juice. So you're going to make a, uh, it's going to get tougher. So it's actually a negative 20 toughness test, Oswald, as you do this. This is tough. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Uh, give me a second. This is good. Oh, this isn't good. Hmm. Uh, it couldn't. It, it could be worse. It could be worse. So you you're pulling this shirt off, and it's almost like you're channeling the anger that you you wish you could aim at sort of whatever force, whatever horrific curses befallen this place, and this and this just pus and shit just flying in your face. You feel the effects that I described from Corbin earlier. Although you look at your own hands as coated in this shit as they are, and right then in that moment, right then those black veins flare up suddenly again and literally your skin drinks in the pus consumes it you watch it disappear into your pores right there before your eyes your friends see you hunched over as you're oh what do you do uh i think to play it off oswald kind of like wipes some of it off of his arm like and slinks it down on the ground like Give me the, a cool check and uh, let's see if you play that off. Give me a, uh, a, yeah. a cool check at regular. So no modifier. Regular. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Hopefully. I'm craning my neck because I'm looking at the wound. What do you mean by playing off? Just wondering. We'll see in a second. Uh, we'll, we'll see in a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, like maybe my back's to you and that's how I'm going to yeah. say, hey, like, yeah. Well, backs to everybody but Grimwald. He's staring right at you. <laughs> it can't be to everybody because Grimwald's in front of you. Nice. Okay. Oh, look at that. So you you feel this sort of cool and and probably unjustified calm creep over you as you, you notice you, this happening. You You don't feel pain anymore. It's sort of like before. Grimwald, give me a perception check because you're looking around the wagon. I'm going to say this is also uh, challenging because you're... You're in looking for loot mode. Wow. Damn it, Grimwald. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right, so I'll I am you the answers to the universe, but you see you see this. And so picture the camera, right, from your perspective, seeing Oswald um, staring down at his arms and watching him recoil at first in pain, and then suddenly he his shoulders slack and it's okay. And you see these black tendrils these tiny capillary like veins throughout his skin and then they kind of disappear as if they were there for that very reason how do you react to that um like sigmar like exclaim are you okay you hear sigmar are you okay what do you guys do so you you see over his shoulder he's there i freak out and start fumbling for my <laughs> canteen to offer it to help clean him up I don't Oswald, have Oswald just puts up a hand like over his back and he just says it's done I have the chain shirt let's move on how do you, how do you guys so he says that right he's it's done he turns and he, he holds up the chain shirt to you and what do they see Oswald so what's your demeanor when you so turn? Like, I think Oswald, as he turns around, he's got like maybe there's even like black veins in his throat and like up up to his eyes. Maybe they're giving shit going black. like a little black themselves. Uh, and wait, like dissipates and he, yeah, maybe it's just like dialing down from that. And he just he himself is like cool. He he understands what he he's made the mental process of 
this is going to kill me, but, but I'm going to get them out. But he hasn't told them that. So you turn and sort of in your head, almost like a whisper in your ear, you hear have an accord. And your friends are looking at you. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you as to whether or not they see the black veins. You make that call. Yes or no? Do they see I, I the think, receding? I think it's more along the lines of... Maybe maybe, maybe they do. What, what do you guys think? Should you see them or not? It's on you. Wait, guys. Hang on. It's on you. Yeah. Yes or no? Just yes or no? You say it. Yes or no? I, I think... Yeah, I think right. so yes. at this point. So I'm you not going to these... notice either way because I'm trying to get that canteen out figuring he just got blasted by a mushroom. Geshwin, though, who was watching very closely, Grimwald obviously saw it. Uh, Bartleby and Geshwin both um, sort of, you, you see that sort of as he described it, just receding back down. This weird black, maybe that's part of what sprayed on him as far as you know. What, how do you react to that? I think he's like the poison just covered him and now it's soaked into his body and he's probably going to die like soon <laughs> it's like yeah i'm kind of resigned to putting on a you know brave optimistic face like good job thanks oswald but i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure okay i think that perfectly captures all three of us <clears throat> you um so oswald holds up the chain shirt bartleby do you you take it from him as he holds it out I, to you i do so it's it's just kind of holding up the canteen, dumbfounded, <laughs> thinking, "Okay, nobody needs Uncle this." Oswald looks to you, uh, and he says, uh, "You're going to need that water, Saban. I'll be fine. I still have my toga." <laughs> and he says with a little grin, <laughs> as he like wipes a little bit of the the little like a little just glob of pus off of his face and brow that's like partially singed from when he was set on fire by them. I'm going to just try to make a jest out of like the clear nervous tension everybody has, but it's like, just don't take more of the toga off, please. <laughs> so <laughs> you, uh, Grimwald, so, um, you're, you're there on the wagon. Um, what you saw shortly before this kind of erupted pun fully intended. Um, it does look <laughs> like these, well, this guy was, uh, carting some loot away. There are a couple of sacks with some very strange sort of pottery-esque kind of things in them. There is a small chest, which looks like it's been affixed to the wagon. So almost like a one of those toolboxes in a pickup truck. But, you know, <laughs> old world style. So Who knows what's in there? Chain shirts. Yeah, it's totally chain shirts. He's a... He's a <laughs> Well, I'm going to get everyone to this side of the, the card or whatever, and then we can all check out whatever we want in here. Okay. So you take the time to do that. Um, you're kind of hoisting everyone. Uh, Bartleby's just a tiny bit heavier than he was before with his <laughs> chain shirt on. There's something about him that looks a little more intimidating. You're not sure what. He's got this kind of steel in his gaze, and it's less resignation than it purpose. You're not sure what that is. You know you wouldn't cross it as you hoist him up onto the wagon. Um, the wagon is not big enough for all of you to stand there in a group, so you kind of have to hop off the other side. What do you, uh, what do you do collectively when you when you overcome the obstacle of the fungi wagon? <laughs> um, kind of looking at the chest um, since I've done obviously a lot of deliveries before and everything. Although, granted horses and wagons not my specialty have i seen these like in practice or know of any sure way of getting this open outside of a key mm. a heavy hammer would probably do it something like that it's fairly fairly well constructed it's it's stout um in fact all of you particularly bartleby because he gets the sort of you know um shipping stuff uh it looks like they were prepared to to tote quite a lot these horses were really big horses um you're not really sure. The, the only things that stand out in the back of the wagon is you're kind of looking at that. Guess one is there's a couple of shovels there that look very well used. Uh, I can't make the comment that, well, I don't think the driver would have the key. I don't think they would probably trust him with that sort of thing. 
but clearly there must have been more than just the driver here with these shovels. You would be correct. So where did the rest of them go? That is the question. Uh, if I can do a perception to look for like boot tracks off, you can do or, that, or one. even variations in the mushrooms since they might have grown up. That's gonna be difficult. So minus ten. Okay. Also, are there any maggots around? Because are you hungry or something? Or what? <laughs> um. No. So. You don't notice any definite footprints going away from the wagon in the direction that you're going, and the direction that you came from. You, I mean, there could be something. You'd need a separate check in to get. You'd want to go on the other side of the, uh, of the wagon yeah. for that. It's literally like you guys went to the next level, and then there's that weird area where you yep. can't go. <laughs> that wasn't intentional, though. But we'll uh, never go back that way. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't move there. Um, you, you don't notice anything. So as you're looking through the wagon ruts, um, the, the thing that really troubles you as you're stepping along, right, and you're, you're looking at the ground, you kind of glance over your own footfalls. And these tiny hair-like mushrooms are growing in your footfalls like they're attracted to... Krimwald thinks, isn't everyone? <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for unusually aggressive mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, no touchy. I can't comment that we should probably make haste, although I'm still kind of looking at that chest. And would anyone want to quickly try to pry open the chest with one of these shovels? Uh, I could. Tr I have uh, engineer's tools. Can I, like, yeah. try and just pop the lock? Yeah, you do, I... you can. What did you say, Bartleby? Uh, Bartleby's, uh, you know, has experience with containers. <laughs> I would definitely offer to help, uh, offering up his hand axe maybe to try to wedge. Um, so, so let's let's rim. let's unpack that for a second, Bartleby. So, is there a reason why you have nefarious experience with uh, containers? If you get yourself into some shit, you shouldn't. I mean, I'm a dock worker. Come on. Yes. Lots of bodies. We, we should, yeah, we should talk about that. Okay, so um, which do you do? Do you take out the hand axe and wail on it, or do you let Oswald try to pick the lock? Or both? Uh, I'm going to let Oswald try to pick the lock first. Okay. Yeah. So, Oswald, you, you unroll your cloth, uh, your sort of, uh, you know, cloth uh, engineer's tools kit. There's all manner of little, you know, sort of screwdrivers and little picks and things in there. There's a compass. Mm -hmm. Some calipers. Uh, Everybody loves maybe a good this set is the of first calipers. time that Oswald, from his backpack that's relatively pus free, uh, that he looted from the other house to put his other stuff in, he pulled out this book <laughs> and like flips to a page where there's like a tumbler and a lock, and mm. like he's like looking over it and he just kind of grabs a few bit like a file and like a a pick a little tiny pick and just kind of tries to pry his way through it so he doesn't damage anything on the inside. I picture like the A Team theme playing in the background. <laughs> so. Nice. Ironically, so Oswald kind of rolls these things out and he's opening this book and you're all sort of standing over his shoulder just like, what the, almost like, what's going on here? And he picks this one and he picks that one and then suddenly leans in. Um, sadly, it doesn't just take like a t -t 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 click. He's clicking and clacking for quite a few seconds. Leans over his shoulder and kind of like, yeah, I got this. And then goes in and almost like Sigmar touches him and you turn the lock. It's kind of a heavy mechanism. It makes a thunk. You think you got it. You're not sure, but you think you did. You're not supposed to use that pick for this, so maybe it's a little fucked up, but you feel good about it. Yeah, in a pinch it worked, and that's what we were going for. We're in a pinch. We're in a really big pinch. So, so you open the chest? Yeah, I think I... Yep, pop it open. Thankfully, this is not Dungeons and Dragons, and no dragon's breath fires in your face <laughs> as you as you open the that as would you be open. Perfect, the, perfect. 
That would be so sweet. It's a mimic, actually. You just picked it. <laughs> 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 just gets eaten. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> All done. Hungry mimic. Uh, no. So you you open this chest, um, and you you smell this kind of oil stench, like maybe there's some lantern oil that's been spilled. Um, it's clearly their supplies. And when I say they, I mean, it's a good sized chest. There's a couple of lanterns in there. Um, there's some little bags that might even have dried crusts of bread and cheese in there. A little moldy, but you can, you can work with that. Um, it's probably about two to three days worth of rations. Who these people were and why they had this, you don't know. Next to that section, sort of on the left side of the chest, uh, there appears to be some sort of gear. Uh, there's a quiver of arrows. There's no bow, so maybe it's extra arrows. Uh, there is a sharpening kit for, so there's a sharpening stone and some kind of, kind of um, <coughs> cloth and oil for uh, you know maintaining swords. You're not sure who these people are, but they certainly weren't from Felblick. Wait, so Oswald this... just like starts handing out the food to everybody, like just food, handing it, it to people. Eat it quick before it spoils. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, Oswald, like he hands out all the food to them and he starts rummaging through like the gear, to see if there's anything in there that could be particularly useful to him. Obviously, um, I already have that one empty quiver on my back. So I, I think Oswald's literally going to take the bundle of arrows. It doesn't matter how many it's in there. Uh, and just shove it into his quiver and then maybe give the other quiver to someone else. There are 12 arrows in here. Congratulations. Here's an empty quiver. For, uh, but yeah, so you I'll get 12 arrows. <laughs> uh, so empty quiver for, for Bartleby, 12 arrows uh, for Oswald. Um, and as you kind of move that stuff out of the way, there is a, a, a smaller box in there. It's not locked. Um, but it clearly uh, is... is at the bottom for a reason as you kind of open it to look at it you realize that there's like quite a lot of coins in there it's all copper right so it's our brass it's all brass pennies there's a lot it just had a store wow i think oswald just says uh there's well if we get out of here looks like we just hit our payday there's probably close to a hundred brass pennies in here yeah, Oswald just picks it up and tosses it at the halfling. You you, sc you scoop up a handful of pennies and throw them at the halfling. No, no, like the little <laughs> box that has the money in it. I oh. like, you know, close the box, throw it at the halfling. So you, you close the box, you fling it to the halfling. Halfling, real quick, please uh, give me a dexterity check. Oh, no. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> expecting to have things thrown at me. <laughs> Dexterity, um, modifier. No, uh, we'll say we'll say uh, let's give it average just so it's not silly. Which is plus what? twenty. Plus twenty. Okay. There you go. So, you you hearing the clink of money, and uh, you know being a half leg. <laughs> that gets my attention. It's like slow <laughs> motion. It's like a slow motion frisbee going through the air, and your hands doosh, and you pull it up to your chest. Now. Rubbing up against your hand, there's a piece of parchment or something. It's not part of the box, right? It's like stuck in the in the lid of the box, like hanging out like this kind of thing. Uh, and you catch it, and it's kind of brushing up against your hands. Check it out. Lean back. You you pull on it and slide it out with a it's a strip of parchment. It's a letter. You don't see who it's from because there's just a sort of seal at the bottom. So who that is, it, it doesn't exactly matter. But it appears to be... Wait, can you read? Do we decide if you could read or not, Halfling? That's a good question. I can't remember. You have the talent for it because otherwise you're illiterate. Yeah. Do you pass it off to the one, like, reader? Picture pages, picture pages. Uh, <laughs> I have... Person that can read. It's very ill. It's... Can it's I? a talent or yeah. yeah yeah it's a talent can you can I look over i don't Corbin's... have a talent for that 
I have a couple languages, but no talent. Barbie, what's that? Can you what? Can I look over Corbin's shoulder and just look and see what the state of the coins are in there? Are they like shiny, new? Are they old? Uh, are they green? With That's a, a really good question. Uh, and that interaction might have gotten you a reversal, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so they're not old at all. In fact, okay. interestingly, they're, uh, you know, you don't have an opportunity to kind of look at them closely, but, you know, your, your gut says, based on the tips you've gotten, that they're recent mint. This was their payday for something, probably. Hmm. Can anybody read this? I wave it around here. <laughs> he looks at it. He's got the money tucked under his arm. It's like holding up this thing. Can anybody read this? Oswald just, like, looks back in confusion, like, why do you have to ask? Out of everyone here, why do you have to ask? Do you not know your friends you travel with? You do feel like a dick because you guys are kind of close. You know he can read. <laughs> You're so horny for this money or something. Like, <laughs> uh, You give it a read? Yeah, I'll look it over. So um, it appears as if uh, this... this was sent from someone who lives in Mersheim, which is to the northwest, um, quite a ways from where you are, in fact, like a couple of weeks. Um, it essentially is a contract, as you read it over, um, between uh, this company of um, acquisition specialists mm. uh, and an individual there by the name of Renholder. He has hired them uh, to visit the Hager Cribs and return with the heirlooms that they would find in one particular grave, which is marked on the back. As you flip it over, there's a description and a, uh, a sort of a tracing of the headstone that one would look for at the mm. sort of marking the top of this tomb. Oswald read that aloud for everybody to hear. It's like you're dictating it. He read it aloud yeah. for everybody else to hear it. Yeah, so it's very formal language for sure. Yeah, very formal language. Yeah, because I, I can actually speak um, uh, the 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 noble language or whatever it is. The I think it's called old something. Either way, I have that skill, um, so I can like read and write it. So it's. Uh, it, he just kind of he speaks even more regally than he normally does, and is like. Uh, someone of high importance used this or is it raiding tombs this could be what has caused this whole ordeal is there anything in the cart that looks like it's from a tomb now so there are the sacks it. there are some sacks um, so you kind of begin to say that you kind of walk right back over and these sacks were kind of cast aside there's uh, the pottery yes uh, there, there are a couple of sacks of, of pottery. Some of them, the pieces are still together. Um, of course, not having, you know, much of an eye for that sort of thing. It's just pottery to you. But it does, uh, to I your point, it doesn't seem evaluate so good. skill. Can I use that? I have the evaluate skill too. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to say, given your backgrounds, uh, for Bartleby, that's going to be hard because he's a dock worker. Okay. Doesn't spend a whole lot of time with fancy pottery. So that's minus 20. Um, Oswald, I'll give you difficult at minus 10. Damn. <laughs> Bartleby's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a whole side to Bartleby that we're figuring out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it really to... is. Yeah. Like, really, really is. I would love to see what... Uh, we're not going to solve that tonight, so I'd love to see what you guys will put in the comments about what the... F why, why does Bartleby know that? How about you, Oswald? <laughs> uh, this does not... Oh, hold up. Give me a second. I'll put it in now. I can. Wow. So, Bartleby, you... You're kind of leaning in and being the first to pull one of these pieces out, and you're kind of looking at it. Oswald, you're watching over his shoulder. Um... This is old world stuff. So your parents were collectors of, of things from sort of ancient bits of family. And you had some smaller examples of this kind of pottery. And the thing that clues you in is the, the language on the side, which is pretty much lost to all of you at this point. 
You're not sure the, the purpose, really. Um, but then Oswald leans in. You're quite certain. Uh, this is the remains uh, of the folks from that tomb. Pottery contains the ashes of this family. So Oswald, like, immediately snaps your hand down because, like, maybe you opened it up and, like... <laughs> like, yeah, ashes like, fly everywhere. <laughs> no, no, no. He, like, he, he, like, you're going to reach for the lid Sorry. and he just, like, grabbed your hand and says, no, those are the remains of whoever they dug up. We need to return them. Bartleby suddenly... Bartleby will carefully <clears throat> place the urn back in the bag and just hoist it up on his shoulder. Yeah, and when you say that we need to return them, I'm kind of like, could this be the reason for the dome and all that? Very much so. Curses are around. a very real thing, as we can tell. So, Bartleby, as a side note, you now understand what those bits of pottery all around your house were. And it explains the voices you used to hear at night, too. Those weren't just a collection of pottery, they were all dead people. <laughs> Fuck! You're having a moment. Uh, what do you guys do? So you hoist the dead people over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a sack! <laughs> like, the worst Santa Claus ever. Uh, <laughs> what are the rest of you guys doing? I'd watch that. Make sure Brings we new all. meaning to the pocket sand thing. Just yeah. Pocket dead people. <sighs> My eyes. Uh, I think Oswald, if there's another urn or two, he might take one as well. Like, so they're they're actually all there's there's uh, in total now that you're kind of looking at it. Um, well, y your guess is there's somewhere between five and eight, but it's over Bartleby's shoulder. There's there there are no others. Oh, okay. the the other sack contains, and I'll let you make another roll since you're a since you're an amazing. If you get another critical success, it'll be fantastic. But otherwise, you know, something I useful doubt well. very we'll highly. See. I don't know that, that will occur. But uh, here's hope and same difficulty. Yes. Okay. Well, let us see if that is the case. I doubt it very much so. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing that you notice, right, is you, you kind of uncinch the rope that's around this and you open it back up. You know, there's a piece sticking out at an angle, which is how you even knew it was full of pottery to begin with. You don't know, you, you kind of look and there are these weird incomplete patterns because it's, um, it all appears to be a shape. Incomplete, shattered maybe. And there's pieces stuffed in this bag. You have no idea what it says, where it came from. You're guessing probably the same place, but you know, you failed your role, so. Uh, I think Oswald, uh, he just, closes the bag back up as best he can and says, this needs to go to What are the rest of you guys doing? So you're, you're sort of there. You see Bartleby having his moment about his dead family. Oh my god, it was Grandma. This is all well and good, but I think we're overlooking one of the most important finds here. Oh shit. What's that? What's the that? food! Food! <laughs> You have a much needed meal. Yes, if the food's good. Good. Oh, it's very much good. It's uh it's okay. Which is interesting. You're not sure what that's all about. Um anything's good right now. I will give you guys uh, a a very hard a very hard in intelligence roll if you would like to sort out why or pick up a pattern that might help you understand why. Uh What's very hard? Minus, minus 30. 40 or something. Yeah, minus 30. Minus 30. Oh, wow. You, yeah, you have an aneurysm. <laughs> I guess have a headache. Hey. <laughs> no, I wouldn't expect I so. will... Wait, that's initiative, not intelligence. One sec. Are you going to... Are you going to... Oh, wait, yes, you have I'm a reversal, wrong. Jim. Oh, yeah, shit. I rolled I the wrong thing. Initiative. I rolled uh, the wrong I'm, thing, too. I did, too. <laughs> um... Two? Can I root? Yeah. yeah. Is that didn't help me. Two? Because you have a two intelligence? 
That's minus 30, so he has 32. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. I was going to say, what the hell yeah. am I seeing here? Okay. Oh, it was minus 30? Oh, I yeah. don't even need to bother then. I'd be at minus <laughs> one. I, put I minus will 20. use my reversal on this. Okay. So in this moment where... um. Oof. Lacking brain power. So that theoretically that gives you a one versus two, right? Yeah. So all of you are, are yep. you know, none of you are, are intentionally studying this stuff, right? You're kind of milling about, you're eating some cheese and really that, that sensation of eating after so long, you, you feel so good. Um, Bartleby's leaning back like something's troubling him. And... You notice this wagon, as I mentioned before, is built to be very sturdy. And therefore, it has iron binding around it. And you also notice that the fungus stops the iron. Now, your grandmother, who we've just discussed, was in a jar near the kitchen counter. She used to talk about how the fey folk, they hate iron. Spirits hate iron. She actually wore a little medallion around her neck between her saggy grandma, you know, <laughs> of iron for that reason. You think there could be something there? You're certain of it. That was well spent, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I don't know anything about the fey folk other than what my grandma told me when I was a boy, but maybe it's, maybe look at the iron, look at the mushrooms. Um, I don't know. Anybody know more folklore than me? Give me perception rolls for those of you who are really interested. Or... So your grandmother being one of the hedge folk, right? So she was into that real, real folky yep. stuff. Yeah. Grandma, I'm interested. Still the headache. <laughs> but apparently not paying enough attention no one's paying attention to Geshwin who is like lying on the ground convulsing from his, like, his aneurysm maybe these mushrooms will help yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Grimwald you lean in and not getting too close right you, you kind of it's, it's almost eerie it's a straight line along the bottom where the iron band is hammered in the wood to hold it together and give it some more formidable structure. These things are burnt at the edge. I point out this detail to whoever's nearby. He's holding the up his rapier. fungus can't get near the iron. Yeah. Does anybody happen oh. to be really good with religion? Uh, let's see. Like very hard, very hard, kind of good with religion. Mm. Don't think so. <laughs> Religious, but don't have any skill or talent to reflect that in a role. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're kind of like those people that donate to the Baptist folks, right? Like <laughs> to the <laughs> to the telethons or whatever. Um, okay, moving on. So you you notice this. And it strikes you as certainly as odd that black iron like this, not refined and sharpened and ready to go, but just this like casual iron could repel fungus. Really anything. Well, if we could find like <clears throat> some just iron nails or something, make little talismans. But I don't know if we have the option here. So. Oswald looks back at the fungus that was creeping up on us. Is it still creeping up on us? Is it even closer? Like, so it is. It's it's it. You notice even the footfalls that you recently uh, vacated, like literally like seven eight inches away, are starting to sprout those little tiny ones. And at a distance, yes, they are filling in. It's it's not like a sea closing in behind you, and the rest of the world is nothing but fungus. It's not quite like that. But yeah. it seems to somehow be attracted to your passing. Uh, could Oswald Shit. think of the wagon as being pullable, like by all of us? This might be a good place for us to sleep, like undisturbed and whatnot. Or we could like 
Do I think I could chip off enough of this iron now that's been discussed to bring with us to protect us? So I'll allow without an engineering check for you to, yes, you could disassemble the wagon. It would take a while. Uh, no um, need to disassemble the wagon. Check the hinges on the chest. There's six of us. Two hinges is three pieces each. Well, the hinges might not be made out of something else. This is unrefined iron. Ah. Bartleby ah. just mathed the living shit out of you. And, and quite honestly, I mean, you wouldn't know, right? Well, I have yeah. that bond. Yep. Yeah. The engineer that, bond. That's true, yeah. Oh, that's I mean, true. Could, I, could, I, I, could, it, could I be inspected to be like, see if it is the same material? Give me an engineering check. Sure. What about horseshoes? Unless you have a metallurgy skill, which I don't think is in the book. There's probably no, a craft not. something. Horses are a good idea, too. The horses that'll, don't need them anymore. That'll be fun. Yeah, yeah prying, not touching prying it. horses out. <laughs> horseshoes off is not true. Yeah, no, that's horses. not getting touched. <laughs> that's not getting touched. They're They're absolutely nice full of Yes. Yes, pretty much. It is worked iron. Um... Not particularly old, right? Nothing like it. It's not probably not blessed. You wouldn't imagine that this wagon has some kind of. There, there are those things that happen, right? Where priests bless weapons before they go into to war with the green skins or, or what have you. Um, yeah, it's the same. Probably. Yeah, Oswald just like takes his hammer and chisel and pops those hinges right out of that, and starts handing a hinge to everybody. Okay, you do. So you makes, pop off. Makes a little, out of more, uh, you know, toga ripping, makes little little necklaces. Fuck. <laughs> one thing we're, to... We're above his knees now. One thing to keep in mind is that the the iron in the wagon maybe protected these urns from the mushrooms, and we should not let them come into contact. Hmm. Yeah, so I think Oswald either... I don't think wearing a little piece around our neck is going to help, because the mushrooms grew up the wagon up to the iron yeah that's a fair point uh, better safe than sorry uh, that's what they say we put them on the bottom of our shoes you can make people's shoes <laughs> uh, we could just pull the wagon how big is the wagon it's Look pretty at the big. size of those horses yeah, there's two... no way Two good size horses. It would take all of us. And the I should say too, attached. like the stuff is the, you know, mushrooms are still coming. Yeah. Yeah. We're sitting here debating things. We well, we have to hope. That I'd this like to move do. on. This, we have to hope that this this will do. This is as best as we can do at the time. Hold on to these as long and as valued as possible. These hinges might save our lives. So Bartleby will stomp his foot into the mud and pull it out and wait for the little mushrooms to grow, and he'll take the iron hinge that he was given and hold it down to the footstep. So you, again, camera zooms in, right? The, the, the sort of light shining yeah. off the glisten, and you and pull your foot back, shake the mud off. It shouldn't be this muddy. It hasn't rained in who knows how right. long. It doesn't take long. It doesn't, it should take longer. They start to sprout almost immediately, and you can see the same putrid shapes of the ones that have just in your face. Tell me, tell me what we see as you hold it down. What do you, what do you think we see, Bartleby? So, um, you know, this is very much like a superstitious thing for Bartleby. So Bartleby's almost holding it like a, like a priest would hold a holy symbol, sort of holding it out at arm's length, moving it slowly closer to the footstep. So as you move it in, your friends are gathered around like those 80s, like the kids gathered around a board <laughs> game. You hold it in and you literally start to see the growths that are coming up like little hairs start to kind of undulate, shudder. And as you push it further in, there's a, as they literally start to sizzle against this iron and burn. You drag them across, and literally within seconds, Ash, you well, all see this. Nana was right. <laughs> <laughs> we need more iron. So yep. that short sword, I think, 
like it looks rather ornate, right? Uh yeah, it's okay. It's it's not like uh yeah, it's not something that Legolas would carry around, but yeah, it's pretty good. It's mm-hmm. right. well, okay. it's forged, cool. not worked though. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's been well, heated. Either Water way. Bro. Let's go. The shovels and the lanterns too. Yeah. Well, those are yeah, those are like get some lanterns, get the rest of the lantern oil and maybe a shovel. What are the shovels yeah. made out of? And the lanterns. Iron. I think maybe I'm these gonna take a shovel. Knew, I think maybe these fellas knew that they were messing with the folk. Everything here is iron. Why wouldn't they use brass lanterns? Some other cheap metal. Well, I'm sorry. I answered. So the shovels are oh, iron. Sorry, the, sorry. the lanterns are fancier. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's iron lanterns, like big fucking crazy metal. Like, <laughs> yeah, and they're like big giant cast iron. Yeah. The lanterns, it's, you're like, fuck. It's, it's I like can't a, even pick it up. <laughs> it's like a. Nor- <laughs> It's like a Norwegian <laughs> black metal lantern. Like, <laughs> no, the lanterns are fancier. They are, in fact, brass with the sort of okay. glass, work glass. But uh, yeah, no, the the shovels are absolutely iron um, and not very well worked at that. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so are you going to yeah, become so a shovel shows. master, Bartleby? This crew could have afforded could have afforded better tools. Maybe they, they didn't. These. Maybe that's the point. Let's grab this and go. Keep your wits about you. The Fae can do all sorts of things. If Nen is still right. <laughs> so far she is. <laughs> so good. Yes, oh, if Nen is still about. right. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. What do you do? So you 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 uh you you leave the wagon and all of its stuff behind. Gather up the food. I would guess. Like what what do you guys do? Because I stuff the box yeah. of coins into my backpack. Of course you did. Well, you threw it at me. <laughs> so there's this moment, uh, Corbin, where you, you open it, right? And you you think about like all the fun that you've had hanging out with Oswald and like there's no food in there. You you've you've gone through all your ingredients, your packets of spices and whatnot, or you know, just the coins almost seem lonely as they drop in there. And you stare at them for a couple seconds and you're like, But at least I've got them. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, also whatever i took out of that chest in the farmhouse to keep them company that's true but we're not going to talk about that right we have to talk about that in our real world uh our real world isolation booth uh interview so yes, you, you gather up this what do you do uh you continue heading north or do you go back through the fungus northward yeah we're going north yeah, we're, going we're going to the catacombs Yep. And there so, was a map on the back of the the letter. Is that does that map lead to where we're going? I think it was more of a depiction of the actual uh, place. Still... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So interestingly, yes, it it sort of kind of lays out roughly where the Hager cribs are, and, and sort of gives you a general idea. Um, you can make a navigation check though, Corbin, if you would like. It's gonna be. Mm, for you pick so if you would like to go against difficult you can get more insight if you want to go against average which is plus 20 um, you get more basic info you pick you looking for let's go with the basic info okay also yes I realize chat that I probably or chat or comments that I probably could have gone with success level on a roll so that's fine yeah, so we'll do that. So the success level of plus two. So you're looking at this and you're one of the things that uh, your parents were a stickler on is you learning geography because a halfling's got to make it out there in the world. You got to know where to go because sometimes halflings wear out their welcome. Mm-hmm. That's coming for you probably in a minute here when they realize what you got <laughs> in your backpack. Uh, yeah, so it basically points to roughly the the south sort of western area of the Hager Cribs, which is about where you are. And then it, it sort of calls out uh, a, a symbol or, a, or some kind of structure, so a stone structure that would have been on the top. Looks like a ring and on the top is some kind of like pointy thing, maybe a crown or some fingers, you don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it absolutely does. And uh, you're going to get a little pip for your 
figuring that one out. So you leave. You move northward for probably about another hour. It's it's a bit of slow going at this point. You're tired. Now you're carrying more. You're not exactly encumbered, but you're not going to be able to jump into a fight without dropping a bunch of shit either. Give me whoever is in front. Who is in front? I'll go in front. Of course. I'll go in the middle. Yeah, same. As always, standard marching order. I could almost line it up <laughs> on it. Uh, Grimwald, give me a perception check, please. Mod. Uh, nope. Am Grimwalds keeping the streak? <laughs> For those watching this stream, I call bullshit on your rolls. I think you're JavaScript. I think you're straight JavaScript raping uh, roll twenty right now. Okay. So you're moving along, kind of head down, looking around every now and again. You notice that this this fungus is in fact closing in to the point where one of the ruts is almost not visible anymore. You're running out of time, and that's not lost on any of you. But Grimwald, as you're, you're filing now, instead of before you were drifting between the ruts, whatnot, now you're filing into one. You notice ahead of you, looks like a feminine figure, maybe? She's moving kind of against the, the haze, the weird amber light that's coming in from the dome. She looks like a silhouette against that light. The uh, trees are kind of at a varied angle. So you see her there in the distance and she's sort of moving back and forth. And I, what do you say? I pointed out to, I guess, is whoever's behind me. Like, do you see that? Uh, I take it, I do see that. As he points it out, you absolutely do. No. You, you uh, point. I kind of like... Nudge him while you use one of your pickup lines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think now's the time. <laughs> oh, shit. This is going to be really hard to decide who gets a reversal for next time, by the way. <laughs> Nana's uh, always right. But as soon as I'm like, the brief moment of, you know, levity, then I'm back to await oh, the last person we saw. I come to him like, this is clearly somebody we're going to have to fight because they're coming towards, right? So, no, as you say that, as you're like, you kind of look, this is, and you look back, you hear this mournful, pain ridden scream from the distance, obviously coming from this feminine figure. She's struggling against something. The movements now make sense. She wasn't dancing, she's trying to push away from something. And it's okay, ahead of so you. Quicken pace and go up there. You take yep. off. Who, yeah. who else takes yeah. off? Same. I'll follow behind them. Oswald. Brandishing my shovel. I'm Oswald does what? what Barnaby's do do? going to take a slower pace to try to prevent oh, I... damage to the urns. Yeah. Yeah, Oswald's okay. got the other urn pack, so he's like, he's trudging along yeah. alongside Bartleby. Okay. Maybe he's got that, uh, that either, yeah, we'll go with the short sword in his hand because it'd be awkward to have a full size hand axe in his hand. Yeah, yeah. who has the shovels? Corbin and. Corbin and... I was thinking Bartleby, but... Uh oh maybe, maybe somebody forgot one. Yeah. Uh, Grandma? Fine. I'm, I'm dual wielding. <laughs> <laughs> two shovels. <laughs> the two shoveled halfling. You know what? You know what? You fucking are. You've got one in your hand, and you have one kind of across your back, dragging a little okay. bit of it. Okay. <laughs> Everybody it's else is overburdened. Spin around. Going. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so you, so the way I heard that was Geshwin and Grimwald, you're moving forward very quickly. Uh, Corbin, do you keep pace? Which group do you keep pace with? Because Oswald and Bartleby are going to fall a little bit behind. Probably the group in front, because I don't feel like Oswald and Bartleby are in danger. Right, so you're gonna run up. All right, you can just run it, dragging. He's dragging, making a little path through the the little baby fungus with his shovel that's dragging behind him as he kind of runs, a little halfling style behind them. So you run up toward this. Um, tell me how you're gonna. What, 
What do we see if the camera is where the crazy flailing woman is? What do we see as you get close? You oh, run all the way up to her and be like, hi. Or what, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, just if I can see what's causing the trouble, if it's something that it can be run up to and stab it, I'll run up to him and stab it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, as we're going, I'm pulling out my rapier. And I like, since we're single file, I'm kind of trying my best to kind of like look around Grimald and see what the hell we're running into. But so as you're running, um, you, you try to stay single file, but obviously the landform is not exactly even. You're squishing into the fungus here or there and kind of, you know, whatever. You pull your rapier out. The two of you run up on what appears to be a woman who uh, is basically leaned against this sort of kind of rise of earth, like this sort of hill on, to the right of the road. And around her is this horde of very small frog-like creatures that are taking very small bites of her. And you might ask, why doesn't she run? And the reason is because she's propped up on her femurs. And she's being eaten very slowly by no fewer than 50 of these little... Picture those cute little things in Star Wars if they were really mad and rotting. Like pfft, like Baby Yoda Wars. with boils. Yes, those things. I'll just soccer kick a few of them away if I can. So you just, <laughs> you just run up on this scene? Yeah. All right. Um, we have six minutes left to our deadline. So I want to be respectful of time. And we're going to start next session <laughs> with literally the soccer, slow motion soccer kick of the gross critters. Uh, At that point, I'm also going, Corbin, shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, shovel me. Let's, let's do this one thing for me. Corbin, uh, give, me a, uh, give me a dexterity check. And just because I want this to be right, it's going to be average. So plus 20. Okay. This is what we're going to leave the stream with. So do it right. This could go one of two ways. <laughs> oh, not plus 200. No, please. Oh! Nice. So I would just yes. like I would just like to illustrate what plan B was. Corbin, shovel. Corbin throws shovel a good 12 degrees off. <laughs> <laughs> So Corbin, shovel, and you literally feel this call to action, and you know that you can't get the one from behind you out in time, so you just toss that one. What does it look like? Tell me, Corbin, what does it look like as you throw this thing? How does that play out? It is going to gracefully arc through the air and land in his outstretched hand. And then, chariots of fire plane. Yes, yes. <laughs> of course. <Yes. laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you, you grab the shovel and you step in stride and we will pick up next time with probably one of the more complex combats we've ever been through involving a bunch of little they're little look at what what damage could they yeah. do there's they're clearly a lot they're eating a lot yeah. <laughs> doesn't doesn't take a mathematician to figure out that action economy but if it did, like that. but if it did, Bartleby's there for us because he's mathing the hell out of everyone right now. <laughs> my character is a um I have that feat that lets me use a calculator yeah Super <laughs> what a complex maybe we just maybe we just quit the campaign and we just have the bartleby novels okay. <laughs> we just do a series with jim explaining how bartleby got to be bartleby we're all psychics in his story <laughs> I roll yes. table. this is what i got <laughs> okay um so who gets the reversal um i'm gonna go with yeah, bartleby you think? No, absolutely not. I got the last one. I don't want this one. Bartleby wouldn't say that. He'd be like, yes, please. <laughs> Bartleby would. Yeah, Could I use die. that reversal to get more alcohol? I want someone else to have the fun. I'm going to go with um, with Oswald, and here's why. Um, that selfless, like, I'm willing to sacrifice and give you all this, and, and I'm, I'm resigned. Yeah. That was super cinematic, yep. and it felt really good. So... Uh, as well, yep. next next adventure, before the end of the adventure, you have one reversal you can use. I have an idea for that. Yeah, what How about is it? the person who got the last reversal picks the next person who has... Shit, that's reversal. a great idea. How about you pick Oswald? 
<laughs> and, and I would that's a good idea. You, you, yeah. use, use it to pick whom you want, obviously. That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. But what I would ask, because I'm going to to lean into chat, I think I got that half broken here, but I don't know. Um, if there's something in the chat, you should keep up with that and, and take that into consideration. Uh, but yeah, I think that's awesome. So the, the last, so next round, you will choose the quote. It could be based on something that's hilarious, something that's super meaningful to the story, or Nana's always right. I swear to God, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We just invented Nana. That's we, cool. she's so, she was praise so nice. Be praise, <laughs> praise be to Nana. Uh, that was actually a Sumerian god, if you pronounce it wrong. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so uh, we have been Myth Brigade. This is episode 12 of the Tides of Nurgle. We're going to do this again in a month. And these guys are getting so close, they're either going to die or not die. And then we'll see what happens after that. I vote for the that. second. Yep. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a hard pass on the first one. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I was going to title this uh, actually um, Puss Daiquiri. Look at the drink of something. God. I can't do that. I don't, I don't think that'll trend well on, on the YouTubes. But anyway, thanks so much. We're going to end the stream, right? There we go. We're done. That was awesome, guys. Cool.